Russians remain motivated to fight in Ukraine despite their army's huge losses. Experts believe that financial incentives play a key role, The Guardian reports. The publication shared that Russian losses in the war in Ukraine amount to 115,000 killed and 500,000 wounded soldiers based on Western estimates. These figures are 10 times higher than the USSR's losses in the war in Afghanistan. Even this does not make Russians change their views on the war in Ukraine, The Guardian notes. The article says that Russia manages to regularly replenish the ranks of its army, recruiting up to 30,000 new soldiers per month. About the same number of Russian soldiers leave the battlefield, which allows the Russian Federation to carry out rotations. The publication emphasized that in some regions, Russians receive an advance payment of up to 3 million rubles for signing a contract with the army. In addition, the minimum salary of a military man is more than 200,000 rubles, which is about four times higher than the average salary in Russia. The Guardian added that, according to the Ukrainian research center Open Minds, after the Ukrainian armed forces broke through the enemy's defenses and entered the Kursk region in the summer of 2024, the number of advertisements for recruiting military personnel into the Russian army increased by 224%. Also in August of this year, the number of internet queries about military contracts in the Russian Federation increased by 66%. A former employee of the Russian Defense Ministry who wished to remain anonymous said that Russian generals do not care about the number of victims. According to him, fulfilling the demands of Russian leader Vladimir Putin is more important. For Russia, the end justifies the means, he added. Dina Kapayeva, a professor of Russia at the Georgia Institute of Technology in the U.S., told The Guardian that the value of life in Russia has noticeably declined under Putin. She also mentioned the speech the Russian leader gave to the mothers of fallen soldiers in which the dictator praised the deaths of their children. Putin is offering Russians the joy of death, Kapayeva said. The publication drew attention to the fact that the Russians are directing most of their resources to exhausting the Ukrainian forces and exposing their positions. Despite the huge losses, this tactic may work, as evidenced by the breakthrough of the Russian army in the Avdiivka, Bakhmut and Volodar. Russian Z blogger and volunteer Vladimir Grubnik said that due to the lack of reserves in the Russian army, even servicemen of the strategic missile forces are being transferred to the infantry for assaults, that is, the very nuclear weapons that Putin constantly shakes, in which case there will soon be no one to launch them. Missile men are being sent to storm the plantings of the Donetsk region. Do we really have no reserves at all? Grubnik asks in the video. The Z blogger also does not understand who exactly will launch the missiles if such a question arises before the Russian leadership. It was previously reported that even air defense crews are being transferred to assault units. That is, of course, a very serious signal. One can imagine the level of losses if it has already come to this. People comment on the Z blogger's confession on the internet. Tatiana Montian, a collaborator who betrayed Ukraine and fled from Kiev to occupy Donetsk after the war started, admitted in an interview that the Russian army's losses are colossal. Responding to the presenter's objection that the Russian side does not publish a list of losses, Montian said that in recent weeks a large number of people she knew personally had died on the front. The collaborator is engaged in supplying occupation units as Z volunteer, communicating directly with Russian soldiers. They don't look at losses. The front stands plus minus. We communicate with people. What is the number of missing? What is the number of dead? Well, even among our friends, the losses are huge. There are a lot of people who have been fighting since time immemorial that were killed only recently, she said. Recently, the Wall Street Journal, citing intelligence and undisclosed sources, reported a grim milestone. About one million Ukrainians and Russians have been killed or wounded since the war began. The majority of dead are soldiers on both sides, followed by Ukrainian civilians. According to government figures in the first half of 2024, three times as many people died in Ukraine as were born. The death toll is impossible to verify.
more than 71,000 Russian soldiers have been identified and confirmed to have been killed in Ukraine, according to a late September report by the independent Russian media outlet MediaZona. Using open source research, MediaZona has been documenting the names of Russian soldiers killed, verifying the information through obituaries, posts by relatives, statements from local authorities and other public reports. Leaked U.S. documents suggest that more Russian soldiers have been killed than previously estimated. In July, The Economist reported that between 462,000 and 728,000 Russian soldiers had been killed, injured or captured by mid-June, citing documents by the U.S. Department of Defense. Russia's losses in Ukraine since 2022 dwarf the number of casualties from all its wars since the Second World War combined. The Economist reported, referring to wars in Chechnya, Afghanistan and Ukraine from 2014 until February 2022.